see uh, till now we have seen how to design op amps especially i mean uh, related to i mean in particular for a given load for a fixed load you know how to design right and that's typically the case for on chip uh, requirements you know what is the system in which your op amp is going to be used you very well know what is the load you can design for it but let us say you uh, design a general purpose op amp that is you are just making an op amp and trying to sell it so that the customer can use it in whichever application he or she wants so there you never know where uh, what will be the load so again ideally uh, your op amp should be able to drive whole range of rl and cl so wider the range of rl and cl your op amp can support better it is for marketing right and also the op amp obviously will be used in negative feedback and you know you don't know what kind of way in which this negative feedback will be used so typically uh, you can find three different flavors of negative feedback one is your inverting amplifier configuration right again it need not be just r and r it could be you know cnc or something complicated but the structure is like this right so this is inverting what do you think might be another possible way of using it in feedback you can use non inverting so it's the same thing but the input is given to the other side and one more possibility is to use it like a unity buffer like this and because this i have drawn only for a single ended output op amp but let us say you have a fully differential op amp i'll draw triangle i don't want to draw quadrilaterals so here you guys know how to make an inverting amplifier so you need to have two sorry you need to have feedback across both the sides so now uh, can you tell me how you can make a non inverting amplifier here okay. i need to have feedback let us say from negative to positive and the input should be applied on the other terminal but here i have two outputs huh? i mean if you, if you make it it's the same right then so can you even make non inverting connection here ha huh? yeah so you can't make right so basically here with fully differential op amps you can't make uh, the conventional non inverting arrangement okay unless you have a case where the you have four inputs to outputs this is not possible right but of course that's not a big uh, drawback because I mean, one plain difference between inverting and non-inverting is the gain is inverted, right? So let us say you make this inverting amplifier here. The gain here is let us say something. You want to get inverted gain, huh? I mean, is there something simpler you can do in a fully differential case? I can basically do this. So basically, this will give you a free gain of minus one, right? because here output is defined with respect to two wires you just flip the positive to negative it's done okay so typically i mean with fully differential op amp this inverting configuration is what it will be used but with single ended output you can have broadly speaking three different cases so let us say what are the uh, challenges in each of these three so let us say i have a uh, inverting case say the input is swinging what can you say about the inverting terminal here it will be huh? it will be almost constant right if the gain is very large it's going to be very small so which means the voltage is going to the gates of your transistors they are also very small so here there is typically not a lot of issues right now let's say i take non inverting case again the input is swinging a lot what can you say about the uh, inverting terminal that will also follow the non inverting thing 
of course now if you take the difference between the two it's going to be very small but what can you say about the common mode now common mode are the two inputs i mean what i'm asking is well, let us say my v plus is v in my negative is also approximately v in what is the common mode now common mode is not zero it's v in right so unlike your uh, this case where the common mode is also very small here the differential is zero but the common mode swings quite a lot right and as you know the input you wanted to go from let us say maximum zero to vdd let us say so which means here you require the input common mode to go from zero to vdd right because if your op amp were to be used in a non inverting case it will turn out that the common mode will be changing a lot so which means you should design so that your op amp can do that right so you want to have a rail to rail input common mode here right now in the last thing if i uh, i'll do the same thing if the input swings here what can you say about this guy that will also follow this so what can you say about the common mode now common mode is also same as before but uh, here you see the output is connected here so which means output should also swing that much if the input is going from zero to vdd even your output should be rail to rail so here we need two requirements my input common mode should be rail to rail and even my output voltage that should be rail to rail zero to vdd is rail to rail okay i mean we know how to get uh, rail to rail swings you can use a class ab stage so this part is typically sorted so we just need to see how we can do uh, this one so i'll just quickly show that and we'll wrap up today so again the goal is to make sure that for your op amps the supported common mode can be uh, zero in the minimum vdd at the maximum now can you think from your memory uh, do you know some op amp structure where the input common mode was zero can be zero huh? folded cascode with n mos or p mos the input common mode should be zero so the p mos input you can get zero common mode with an n mos input you can get vdd common mode so let's see so let's start with the p mos so let me quickly draw let's see if i can do it quickly this is the current source let's say this is the p mos differential pair so now this has to go to a cascode that should be n mos so i'll basically draw an n mos cascode and connect it so here i'll have a current source so here i'll have a p mos cascode right so let me quickly draw Okay. Cool. So this can support, as you know, uh, common mode of zero. now what is something that can support common mode of vdd n mos input uh, folded cascode so if you want to have zero to vdd what do you do you have to use both in parallel right so let us let me draw an n mos input in parallel so i'll give the same input or i'll actually push it here same input goes to this guys let us say i have a uh, tail current here so remember for the nmos i need to take this and give it to a pmos cascode so do you see a point here where i can go and add the current 
remember that for nmos i should uh, go and take this guy and connect it to the source of a pmos cascode right so i already have a pmos cascode here so i can basically go and connect it there right so i'll just quickly draw so that we don't spend time okay so now if you actually see you will have the current from the pmos coming from here similarly from the nmos you will get some current the two will add up and you get the output okay with respect to small signals we we'll have both the nmos and the pmos contributing to the gm the small signals currents from both the nmos and the pmos they are kind of buffered right the P, uh, pmos current is buffered by this nmos cascode nmos small signal current is buffered by this pmos cascode and both of them go and add to the output and generate the output right so okay i mean again the idea is you have to, you need to use to one of pmos input and nmos input and add the two right that's the idea you want to get a zero to vdd common mode swings common mode range so the basic idea is you take a pmos folder cascode and nmos folder cascode and then add the two that adding is done in current domain like this that's all okay. so this uh, what can you say about the short circuit gm here now hmm? if i didn't have the nmos what was the short circuit gm i mean i didn't have the nmos here what was the short circuit gm gm of the pmos differential pair now i also have an nmos adding the current so yeah so this will uh, this is something that you can do but uh, this has one minor issue let me just uh, talk about it for a couple of minutes and we'll stop see the gm is basically some of the two gms right and you know that uh, let me go to next page so let us say i change the common mode here from 0 to vdd when the common mode is close to 0 which of the gms i mean which of the transistors will contribute to gm pmos nmos will be off so we'll, for a small range you will have gm only from the pmos now for uh, common mode close to vdd which will contribute you will have something in between say around vdd by 2 so the gm will kind of right so this is something uh, sometimes might not be preferred because gm is varying a lot which means your stability right gm on by cc everything will change across input common mode plus if gm is varying with the input that is going to introduce additional non linearity so uh, there are different ways in which you can uh, solve for this i'll just show one way and we'll stop see the idea is or let's look at it this way let's say around this point when the input common mode is around vdd right only the nmos is contributing to gm pmos is definitely off now let us say this is uh, 1x this is 2x if i were to make this gm equal to this point i need to increase the gm of the nmos by 2x fine that is when the common mode is close to vdd i need to boost the gm of the nmos by 2x that's all i should do here i should not touch it right and remember uh, the nmos is biased with a constant current so gm is proportional to root i if this has to go by 2x this has to so one idea is basically you uh, find uh, around this point of common mode you increase the bias current of the nmos by 3x i mean by 4x right so uh, that can be done as follows simple circuit i'll just show and finish it let me erase all this let me erase this uh, output side it's not required now i'll just show the input side alone See here. Uh, let me make it below. Yeah. See when the input is close to VDD, this guy is off, right? Now uh, let us say bias currents here are equal, I B I B. <coughs> so if this is off, this current is anyways floating. Now for the NMOS, I should change the current. 
make the current 4x. I already have a current of ib. So I should somehow add a current of 3 times ib. Now you see that this current source is anyways floating because the PMOS is off. So what can you do? You can basically take this current and copy it here and multiply by 3x. Right? So uh, one thing is you can basically do this. You take this current. If this is 1x, you make it 3x. And you make sure you should connect it to some voltage here so that this draws current only when uh, these guys are off, right? That you, I'll, I mean, you can work out, you can see how we can generate it. This should not draw current when the PMOS is active. You connect it to an appropriate bias voltage so that when the PMOS is off, you steal the current here and add it. So that will equalize the GM on the higher side. That is here, you will be sorted. Now similarly for uh, making the GM here, when the input common mode is 0, I know NMOS is off. You do the same thing for the PMOS and increase it here. Right? So that is, I will do the same thing. I will, uh, I know when the input common mode is close to 0, NMOS is off. I will take this current and add it to the PMOS. GM of the PMOS should go by 2x when the input common mode is close to 0. Right? So you add an additional current source here. This should be 3ib and this you get it from no i mean i am just so this you tap it from here you steal the current from here Basically, you make sure this current is stolen here, mirrored, and then you do 3x here. Right? So again, this is uh, one way, I mean, there are different ways. So this is called GM equalization. I mean, this is something you uh, most probably might not even use. Yeah, this voltage, you should connect it to an appropriate voltage so that uh, this should steal the current only when the NMOS is off. So, what is GM boosting circuit? Yeah, that is also some, but that, that also should be active only when the other guy is off. This, this is one way. It's kind of a current switch, right? It is switching the current from uh, this branch to this branch. So yeah, you are right. This is a, this is a current switch. The idea is you do anything you want. This is just one way, right? One simple way. You do something so that when the common mode is at one extreme, you boost the GM of the other side. Similarly, when the common mode is in the other extreme, you boost the GM of this side, right? Yeah, I mean, this is something only if you are designing a general purpose op amp with, you know, uh, very tight specs, you will use it. But otherwise, you will not use. But typically, I, uh, I mean, it is always nice to know different solutions because the way I suggest you to look at everything is, See, I, I don't expect you to remember the circuit as such, right? Any problem, any solution, try to understand it not at a local level, at a top level, right? That is, you understand what is the uh, basis of the problem and how the proposed solution is trying to address the sol problem. If you understand the basic principles of what is the problem and the problem solving, you know, like technique, that if you understand, then in some other discipline, some other domain, you can encounter a similar problem. Then you'll be able to map it and use similar principles. That should be the, I mean, way of actually, you know, like reading anything, right? I mean, 